Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Medford Knife Praetorian production model on Love Live Knife's channel. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. The Praetorian Production Knife by Medford Knife and Tool. They make knives right here in the good old USA in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Greg Medford being a Marine. So, you know, he's making them big. He's making them tough. And uh, they're not exactly beauty queens, are they? They're made for some rugged, tough use. This is the production model, which is a liner lock, as opposed to the Praetorian G, which has a titanium frame, frame lock, and a G10 on the front. So this is G10 on both sides, liner lock, that is a titanium liner. There's your lock up about 40% on this thing. This other hardware looks to be titanium. The Blade HQ who provided this knife to our pass around group, the Apex pass around group. Um, they say that it this is titanium indeed. So I believe uh, not only the liner and the pocket clip are titanium, but I believe the standoffs and that the other uh, hardware pieces on here are as well because they're not magnetic. So uh, if you're gonna do titanium for your liner and you're gonna do it for your pocket clip, well, how about your screws? And I've had the micro Praetorian where the screws were, uh, you know, anodized, electro electrically anodized, which means they're titanium. Okay. And I think this is pretty weak here. I'm feeling the blade through here, but I think this is, I think this is titanium as well, the pivot, which I can't take apart and feel for it because it voids the warranty. So that's one thing this pass around group is not going to do, is not going to disassemble this knife. It's provided again, like I say, by Blade HQ. Print off a piece of paper here 3.75 inch blade, stone wash, Medford knife and tool. Green G10? No, this is not the green G10 one. This is like the Coyote Brown, but I, I this is the link I was given. I have a feeling there's another one out to the other side of the pass around group that's probably this color or whatever. So in any case, $390 is the retail price. It's got four out of five stars by three different people who gave feedback, overall length, almost nine inches, but 8.75, D2 blade, Tanto style blade, hollow grind, stone wash, plain edge, a uh, five inch long handle, G10, and it's a uh, 0.62 inch thickness. And some of the people really liked it. I mean, they're like, great EDC knife. It's so light, just throw it in my basketball shorts and, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but no. Here's, here's their guy that just went all out, right? I forget it is in my pocket. Isn't it funny when you get people who are real fans of a certain knife that they can be so, so forgiving? Because how many of you guys are going to go, uh, almost a half pound knife is just disappears in my pocket. Okay. So, I mean, you know, takes all kinds to make a world, right? This is not gonna probably disappear in your pocket. You will probably know it's in there. Although, it's not overly thick, but it's like six tenths of an inch. 0.62, so 15 point, almost 16 millimeters. And blade stock is five millimeters. Okay, so that's 0.19, and it was eight, two, two tenths of an inch, so it's two tenths of an inch. Hollow grind, D2. I mean, the grind doesn't go way up here and you're starting at five millimeter coming down to here. But Stasa23, who sent me this knife for review, and I will give you the link to his channel and also to Zelric's channel. 
He's the We Knife uh, rep in the USA, but he's also involved in this big pass around group that we're doing. And he's got his own YouTube channel and he reviews knives and he does the Apex News. So I'll give you the link to him, to Stasa23, to their YouTube channels. Check them out. Um, but Stasa says, I was surprised at how well it would slice being a big brute. And I, uh, so when I got the knife, I go, oh, let's just check him out. And you know what? Not too shabby. He goes, well, I checked it. It's like 0.19 uh, behind the edge, 0.19 of an inch behind the edge. So can we can we get the paper off the table? So that's that's pretty thin behind the edge and a hollow grind. And he was kind of questioning whether the hollow grind is a great idea as opposed to maybe more of a flat grind uh, for holding that edge in real heavy use situations, whether you might be more likely to roll the edge. I, I don't know. Um, I, 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 you know, folding knives to me are not necessarily hard use knives because I would go to a fixed blade if I'm going to do some really hard use. Bush crafting, splitting wood, you know, I'm not, you know, this is not, but I mean, as far as folding knives go, this would be a hard use folding knife. I mean, capable of some pretty hard use. Although, you know, here's your blade stop up here. And so on one side, it's G10. On one, the other side, it's the titanium and G10 that's stopping that blade. So there's no internal blade stop in here. And you can see you got standoff. Two, three, four of them. I'm thinking they're titanium. They're definitely not magnetic. So whatever. They're pretty thick and heavy. Structurally, this knife is very strong. And it's a badass. You got the Betsy Ross flag on one side. You got the Medford uh, logo on the other. Of course, Medford Knife and Tool. And uh, USA. And then this one says USA 100%. Made in USA at the little bottom of here. So there you go with that. Um, yeah, I think it's carryable. Uh, you know, if you got heavy work pants or jeans on, you can carry this. You can carry it. It's, it's not light. I mean, uh, check it out. Grams. 200 and almost 217 grams. Let's push it up here. So let's go back to what uh, ounces... And so at 7.65 ounces, that's a heavy knife. I mean, it's just way, way heavier than most knives. Most knives are somewhere between 3.8 and 5.5 and ounces. So that's, it's a lot heavier. It just is. Big, heavy stone wash on here. Industrial look. Rude and crude. You got these big fullers that are cut out of here on the blade you've got some aggressive jimping this is really aggressive this is aggressive even though this is stone washed you'd think this is fairly smoothed off but it's not it i mean it is smoothed off but it's still aggressive it's aggressive and this back here is also real catchy and aggressive so it's going it's going to give you some grip and you got this little cutaway here, so you, you know, for knife sharp, you got this choil area. You can go forward up here if you need to. Have you got enough room on the handle? I do, and it's a five inch handle, so it should be good for almost anybody there. Reverse grip, the ergos are pretty good. The fit and finish on this knife is, is pretty good. I mean, you know. Everything's kind of cleaned up along these edges here. So I don't really have any bitches about fit and finish. This pass-through is real obvious and easy to get through to, but there's a lot now there's a lot of tension on this lock bar, which is good because it keeps it engaged when you're using. On the other hand, it's titanium, and I had lock stick. Very, very strong lock stick on this when I got this. And it's still medium strong, okay? And Stasa actually handled the knife before he sent it to me. I'm the first reviewer with it in my hand, so it's 
pretty much as you would get it from Blade HQ. But that's pretty strong lock stick. He was saying when he disengaged the lock stick, he was still having a hard time physically pushing this liner aside because it's so strong. Yeah, yeah, it is really strong. So, I mean, this is not some easy to twiddle little knife where you can just push the lock bar aside and close and open like that kind of thing. It is not going to work like that, okay? So this is... Now, there's a lot of people... I think this will get smooth enough with these bronze washers in here to finally... Yeah, I'm one-handing it now. I've opened it and closed it probably 150 times or more easy. So, and I'm not going to throw any lube in here. These bronze washers, I don't know that they really need it. And it looks like I'm getting some kind of look here from it. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, well, the track for the detent. And there was some other kind of black stuff in here, and I don't know what it was. But nah, I don't know that it needs it, and I don't want to change it for the next reviewers down the line. I want to leave it original to the way it was issued. So, yeah. But can you open it one-handed? Yeah. Um, I, it's not smooth enough yet. I can middle finger flick it. Although, it's about a four and a half. Maybe four and three quarter to five at best on the detent scale. Okay. You can flick it open pretty easy. So, it's another way to open it, obviously. And that deep. That lock stick just keeps on rocking, doesn't it? It's centered up. No blade play, no lock rock. And it's 390 bucks, right? So it's not cheap. Come on, we can just open it like that. Okay. So it's a big knife, though. Right? As we've been saying, and I'll measure it out for you, but, you know, three and three quarter inch blade, which is about 95, 96 millimeters in overall eight and five eighths i don't see eight and three quarter here do you i don't um but uh 21 and a half centimeters long okay so if you want to compare it to rex hey rex get out here we'll do rex today so lengthwise i mean eight and a quarter eight and five eighths not a huge amount of difference in the size, is there? Not a lot. Now, flip the aspect ratio. The Praetorian will look bigger at this point. But not a whole lot bigger. Eh, putting the, trying to get the pivots lined up here. You know, not much. No much difference. Uh, the Praetorian was kind of what I thought Medford's claim to fame was years ago. I always thought they were so cool. I always really wanted a full custom because I wanted titanium both sides. I didn't want the Praetorian G because it was G10 and then the titanium on the other side. And I go, I want full tie. And I wanted the full quarter inch thick blade sock, which they do on the full custom. So that would have been my preference. The Praetorian G, I really don't have any interest in. It's 600 bucks and it's G10 and D2. This is G10 and D2, but this is 390. So this is a lot less expensive. If I was gonna buy and try and actually afford a full-size Praetorian, I guess it'd be the one I'd buy. But no, I'm not really, I'm just not feeling this one after all. Um, I'm kind of uh uh yeah not not really feeling it it's not my kind of knife necessarily even though i like beastly knives i mean like the pmp i mean this is eight millimeters thick this is huge this is very heavy okay so yeah this is heavier this is bigger this is more beastly hell i can middle finger flick this um, and you know, you got this big oblong fuller as well, but this is D2 as well. And yeah, these at the end were going for 250 bucks. So 390, you know, so yeah, 
if I want, you know, a conversation piece that's a lump that you're really never going to be able to carry, uh, uh, you know, effectively, there you go. Um, this you can carry, but it's still pretty heavy for most people to really consider an EDC. So it's going to be a proud carry conversation piece, uh, you know, testosterone uh, <laughs> booster, whatever. And Stasa and I were talking about what knife would you take in to deployment if you were in the military getting deployed? And I go, I wouldn't take this. I wouldn't take the Formax from Cold Steel either. I'd take probably the Recon one from Cold Steel. Be a more utilitarian, usable, lighter, but still you got the triad lock. This one, I think it's just too heavy and I'm not sure the blade shape really lends itself to a lot of different utility tasks like the Recon 1 does. And the Recon 1 is in S35VN now. So, I mean, this is D2. So it'd be a little bit more corrosion resistant as well. I don't know. So, as far as that goes, not sure. Um, this one comes in this zipper pouch, of course with the dog tag on it. Midford Knife and Tool, 100% made in the USA. His box, 100% made in the USA. And on the back, on the side panel here, gives you the model, information, all that kind of stuff. And inside there were, from Blade HQ, uh, they, I think they threw this little lanyard in, and then you get the card from Medford Knife and Tool. And uh, then you get paperwork as well. So, and Blade HQ through a bunch of other little stickers and stuff. But limited warranty, care, and use. And then, Octung, uh, pay attention. Uh, here's the stuff. Please do not disassemble it. This is the way to ship it back to us if you want uh, warranty work done, that kind of thing. So, big old box, just like this. And they come in different uh, colors of G10. So, if you do want an OD green or whatever, you can get it. Yeah, I mean, big old thick blade stock, five millimeter, you know, six tenths of an inch here. Good ergos. Can you go forward? Yes. Will it slice? Yes. Um, so you can do a lot of things with this. And it just depends. If you like the big knives, if you like big thick blades, if 400 bucks doesn't, doesn't bother you, and uh, I just don't like that lock stick. Dang it. Oh, come on. Wow. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate that. Oh, my God. I dented, and that's a thick callus on the end of that. Whew. Uh, yeah, Stasa was saying he was getting the same problem with this one. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's just not good. That's just not good. In any case, and you don't want to disassemble it. Otherwise, other knives that have had this problem, I've disassembled and then taken a, a diamond stone just to the very end of that of that liner, you know, and just kind of smoothed it a little bit, and it will usually take that lock stick away, but I can't disassemble it without voiding the warranty and probably making everybody unhappy that's going to get this knife after me. So, no, I'm not going to do it. So here it is, Rufty Tufty, go forward. Is it overly heavy? <sighs> you know, that just depends on you. And, uh, I mean, it's a classic design. The lines flow really nicely on it. All that kind of stuff. <sighs> it's just, for me, I wouldn't want $390 of my knife money tied up in this knife. If I'm going to tie it up in a knife, it won't be this one uh, for that much money. If this was like 170 bucks, I think I'd get one and just have it for the odd, freaky, you know, I'm, um, uh, you know, fun, uh, proud carry type stuff, that kind of thing. But I just feel like I can't really use it at almost 400 bucks invested. So, yeah, it's a different kind of deal. It's a different kind of deal for me. If I want just some D2 beater, I mean, I'll just take, you know, there's G10, liner lock, but it's steel liner, 
and it's D2 and it's easy to operate, really easy to disengage. Why wouldn't I do that? This is a 2 you knife, but I mean, Best Tech, D2, the Paladin, ceramic bearing, same thing. You know, got nice steel liners in there. Functions are great. You know, good solid and more usable blades, shape, style. To me. To me. So, I just, now nah, I can't see it. Can't see it. Next, we'll pass it to the next guy and we'll find out. Because there were some great, I mean, there's some people. Pause and read. If you want to hear the other side, this guy is like, Five stars out of five, you know, with his, his, his take on it. I mean, he couldn't say enough good things about it. So I think it, it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of which knife do you like? If you like the big, thick, heavy Brutus knives, this is one of them. I prefer probably the Formax, uh, because I just think, and to tell you the truth, not only the Cold Steel Formax because it's CPM 20 CV steel, so an M390 type of steel, much higher end steel, less corrosion, uh, you know, a more corrosion resistant, and the Triad Lock. And it's a big heavy Brutus too, but I think the blade grind being high, more usable blade shape, and about a hundred bucks less, you know? But if I'm going to get my dream Medford, it would be the infraction. I'll put a link to this review I did. This is a beautiful knife. I like the infraction. That's almost the same blade length, but eight inches overall. You know, a lot less, uh, you know, 5.47 ounces, but full titanium front and back with S35VN blade. I mean, if I'm going to blow it out on a Medford knife. This is what I'm going to blow it out on. Just saying. All right. Hey, I got to cut you loose. What do you think, Flanagan? Yeah, time to get back to our other chores. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be some comments in the comment section. I don't know. There's going to be some people going, forget it, it ain't worth it. And there's other people like, it's my dream, it's my grail knife. And you know what? You're all right. All of you are correct. Because it's, it's just a matter of perspective individually. This is not a poorly made knife. It's a well-made knife. It's solid. It's tough. It's just, for the money and stuff, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. All right. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us. And you know what we do. We love them knives. So you guys, stay sharp.